Okay. Uh, I'm about to borrow the lift so I can uh, get the motors in the truck. We'll estimate those motors are probably like 90 pounds, so 36 times 90 pounds. So 3,000, a little over 3,000 pounds on that pallet right there. It's pretty crazy. That thing's sagging, boy. I'm doing a uh, Snapchat video real, real quick, uh, putting the Sundown ZV6 uh, motors in the back of the work truck. So putting that 3,000 pounds in the back here was pretty, pretty tough. We're gonna head over there to drop these motors off. So we'll see y'all in probably 10 minutes. So uh, we just got done uh, unloading the motors out of here. As you can see, the work truck is, uh, she's got some height back to her now. She so got all that weight on her. So we unloaded about 3,000 pounds of subwoofer motors. So we're gonna come in here. We're gonna show you kind of how one goes together. I think he's already built it, but, so here's a basket right here. So I was showing you the motor earlier. So this bolts to the top of the basket with these holes right here. They'll bolt it to there and then they have spiders that'll go on top of here and you can see where they've sanded those down so it gets a good um, adhesion to there you have your uh, spider and then you have your voice coil in here that goes up and down in the motor like I was telling you earlier and then you have your cone that goes in here and your surround that attaches to this spot right here we created a big problem for sundown from ordering so many subwoofers they just couldn't keep up with our demand so they actually contracted out Travis here and he's been helping them try to keep up with our demand. He still even struggles to do it, uh, trying to get help and everything. So he's putting together the subs here. Here's what everybody and their mother is waiting on. Yeah. This very it's simple, <laughs> this very simple little item of coil wound on a former. So it, it's this little wire right here that they wind it around there and that's where you get your your ohm load basically. Yep. So you you can come up with pretty much anything, right? Dual point three fives, you half can do quad on, coils, octa coils, but honestly, most people go with the dual coil it, just because it's ease of wiring conditions. That's the main reason they do dual coils. Uh, so what he's saying is right here you have these uh, two sides to that, so it makes it a dual voice coil basically. I think this is a dual two, so that's a two ohm coil. That's a two ohm coil. You could make a a single one or a single four, um, but it, it doesn't make it easier on the end customer. So. Right, right. This is how a voice coil works. You see how it slides down in there? But when you put it together, the basket bolts to the top plate right here of the motor. And then once you have it all put together, this voice coil is sliding up and down in this, they call it the gap. So it's sliding up and down in there. And uh, that's how it works. So we actually take a couple of components here. So a, what a lot of subwoofers don't have um, and where you'll see triple joint failures is this ring right here. This isn't something off the shelf. Jacob actually tools these up himself. There's been a couple different iterations of these um, and it's even down to the fine detail of that's where like the tinsel leads are passing through. So, you know, there's been a lot of work that's gone into these, but that goes underneath and then the coil, coil slides through there. And then that's what's called the triple joint because we've got the uh, the former, the cone, and the spider all meeting together. So those so. three things coming together right there. So that's yep. how they came up with the name triple joint. So you can see it right here uh, after they have put the spider in here in the subwoofer on that landing that I told you was sanded down earlier. So they'll put that glue there and they'll set that down there. And you can see where the, well, you can't see the voice coil from here because the triple joint night is right there, but it's behind that glue uh, bead right there. But if you look down in here, come around the top, if you look down here, you'll see where the voice coil is sitting down in there. So what they're going to do right now is they're going to take these leads, the, this one right here, let's see, this one right here is coming from the uh, terminal on the outside. And then you have this one that's coming from the voice coil. So they're going to solder, like wrap it around, solder it together. So it gets a really good connection. 
And then, uh, do you put any glue on Yeah, there? we do another layer of epoxy over that, and then we uh, and then we do the cap glue, and then we let it sit for six to 12 hours. Yep, so uh, they'll put, like, after they get that solder, they'll put glue in there, and they'll come in with the dust cap and stick it on the top so it looks nice and pretty. You don't see all that stuff on the bottom side. Yeah. Uh, what, do, what do you call these? Uh, these are just vented spacer rings, is what I call them. Okay. Um, Jacob tooled these up. Uh, the tooling on something like this is probably 10, 10 plus thousand dollars. Uh, and you can see the logos even etched in there. But these aren't just the size that they are. These have been sized uh, so that when the when the woofer actually strokes up, this is coming in at a certain velocity. So there's, there's a lot of science that goes behind a, a simple looking part like this. A lot of people think that when you play, like, when you play a sundown sub out of box and you'll hear that chuffing and they think that's a bad, but you want this to be an air pump. You want this moving so as cool. much air as it can through it. Because as soon as you put it in your box, you're at 150 decibels. You're not going to hear it. Right, and it's inside of the box. I mean, yeah. it, it, even a lot of people like I have my subs inverted. And like once you're playing your bass, you, you I've never heard it anyway. <laughs> so you yeah. won't even hear the the chuffing, uh, the, the air noise coming out of the subwoofer when you're playing it in your ride anyway. But you'll know that the subwoofer is getting awesome cooling. Yeah. Like Sundown, so like on the ZV6s, I know Jacob said that he uh, also in the motor, um, it, he changed the channeling yeah. of it yeah. inside of there. So opened up the channels here from the five to the six. I believe the five did still have those, but the, uh, the gap opened up pretty considerably to allow an eight layer coil, which a lot of people think an eight layer coil handles more power, but it doesn't. Um, what it actually does is it creates more magnetism in the gap, which makes this a stronger driver. Nice. Uh, Did they change the channeling of the air flow inside the... I, I can't remember if the five had the pole channeling or not. Mm -hmm. I think the five, five just had the outer gap um, Jacob will have to comment on that. I think okay. they resize the bottom ones also because every time they change this gap, they have to resize all the ventilation. Right. So, That's right. and then he's got three different bolt patterns on here. One is for your standard baskets and your sundown baskets. I believe this is for the U, and then this is for the 18s because the 18s actually don't require the the spacer adapter anymore. So that is a, a new tool in there. So. All right, so that'll be everything. I just wanted to bring you all along on the uh, journey over here to drop off the ZV6 motors and you got an in-depth tour of how ZV6s go together, the different parts and what makes them great. Uh, every time uh, Jacob comes out with a reversion or revision of the uh, subwoofers that he does, it's always better, but that's sundown. They do tons of research and development and each time they come out with one, they're already looking at how they can make it better the next time. So, uh, But I think he had the ZV-5 for probably, I was just getting my ZV-5s in when I moved out here and that was about four and a half years ago, somewhere around there. So I've been selling ZV-5s for almost five years now and now we're moving to the ZV-6. But at, when he first started, I think what he had ZV-1s or something? ZV-1s, they ran like a couple hundred of those. Uh, and actually, it it looked like the original X almost. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then the twos were more of a sound quality driver. Uh, they, yeah, they were a real thin, thin layer coil. Everybody loved them, but they kept breaking them. Oh, and then the three came out, and he, he just kept beefing it up, beefing it up, yeah. and it's like, doubled in price. Oh, it's yeah. moved up in, in its slot category, but oh, for, sure. for, but for a normal motor... daily driver, oh yeah, you got you have so much more driver here. This driver used to be a 45, 50 pound driver. Yeah, so, so now it's double. Now it's double that weight, and oh, you yeah. can see like so. Just the motor now is like you said, 85, 90 pounds yeah, somewhere in there. more than the old subwoofer. Yeah, the whole total. subwoofer together. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, kudos to Sundown. They're always pushing the envelope, and you know where to get them at downforsoundshop.com. Your number one source for it. Yo, what's up guys? If you want to see more of the hot content that you just saw in that video, be sure to follow me on all my social media channels from YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, The Life of Price is my handle on there. Also have Down for Sound Shop on Facebook and Instagram, and don't forget Snapchat is JPD4S. Check out all the hot content on there as well.